When I find a song or album that I like, the very first thing that I do is I go to YouTube and I search that same song along with cover, instrumental cover, orchestral cover, piano cover, cello cover, and remix. Now, if an album can do this for me, that's pretty much a match made in heaven. And maybe that's what this album is too. Welcome to Popcorn and Vinyl, the show dedicated to films, film scores, and vinyl. And on today's episode, we're covering an album that I didn't know existed. I was just browsing the record store. I was actually there to pick up an album for somebody else where I looked at the record store day releases and I see this. Well, I wasn't really sure what it was. I think I saw it out of the corner of my eye at one point where I was looking at Discogs for the original uh, Tron soundtrack, but this is Tron Legacy Reconfigured. And what this is, is a collection of remixes based on that original album by Daft Punk. Now this album features those remixes by some of the top artists in electronic music today. Artists like Avicii, Moby, Paul Oakenfold, a slew of artists that are kind of the best of the best uh, in that electronic music scene. So marry that with the incredible soundtrack by Daft Punk, well, this should be an incredible album. Being so pleased with the original Tron soundtrack, I thought this had to be amazing. So I immediately picked it up. I didn't even uh, like research it or anything. I wasn't even quite sure. I just took a quick little look at the front cover and immediately swapped it and went, uh, kind of hoping for the best. And usually I at least listen to an album before I buy it. It's not often that I make a blind purchase and normally I kind of luck out in what I get, or at least I've had a pretty good track record so far. Before I do end up buying an album, normally I do listen to it ahead of time just to see if I actually like the music on the album. It's rare that I go in for a blind purchase, but when I do, I've had pretty good luck so far. Maybe until this album. Now one thing that I love about remixes is it's the chance to kind of enjoy that music that you love already so much, but it's kind of a refreshed way. It's a new, it's a reimagination of that song often. It gives kind of a new tempo or new vibe and it just reinvigorates that song for me. That's why when I find a song I like, sometimes I will download like 10 versions of it with different remixes. So with a score as strong as Tron, I figured this has to be ripe for some phenomenal remixes, especially by the artists listed here. I started listening to the album and track after track, it was kind of more of the same. And what that same is, is dog shit. Tusty! This album is not good. I was very surprised by it. And, and before I go down the path of explaining my thoughts on this album, I just wanna kind of explain what my take is on reviewing an album and how I would request that you also kind of take this info in. Um, one thing that I do with like a reviewer is I like to see a whole body of their work and I like to follow all of their reviews so that I can gauge how I kind of align against their views. For example, there is a film reviewer that I absolutely love. I've been following from, for years named uh, Chris Stuckman. And I find that I agree with him 100% of the time on his judgments of films. So often I'll finish a movie, come back from the theater, and I'll watch one of his reviews almost to see how I feel about it. Like basically he, <laughs> he tells me how I feel about a movie. I watch his review and I agree completely. So that when I do see a review of his, when I you know, haven't seen the film yet, I can get a pretty accurate portrayal of what that movie is going to be like, especially when it's something that I'm not sure about on the fence as to whether I should bother actually seeing it in theaters. I take his advice to heart, or at least his opinion. Similarly, or I guess in the opposite direction, there's another reviewer on the film score side. Years ago, I used to follow a blog called Film Tracks. Uh, and I forget the name of the, uh, the main author. It's Christian or Caleb or something along those lines. Uh, but anyways, I found very soon that I agreed with him very strongly 50% of the time and disagreed completely the other 50% of the time. And I was able to see patterns of where I disagreed with him. I noticed that he really did not like a lot of Hans Zimmer's work along with kind of Hans Zimmer's kind of uh, group of composers under his production company, Remote Controlled Productions and Media Ventures. 
So pretty much any time I saw that in a review, I pretty much knew it was going to start steering in a bad direction. And often I knew to ignore that because I knew that I already liked a lot of that work from those artists and that review didn't reflect how I felt about it. But in other senses, a lot of the times that he would look at more orchestral, more classic type scores, um, we agreed a lot of the time on that criticism, good or bad. So I was able to kind of, with that website and that blog, I was able to see you know, where I agree and disagree, and I was able to take in future reviews with kind of that grain of salt. So kind of what I'm asking with this review is, you know, it's a great time to hit that subscribe button because if you kind of watch my reviews over time, you'll see like where I fit and how your views fit in with that. You could learn to ignore me completely uh, or where, you know, my advice or my opinion kind of aligns with yours as well. So I think that's a good strategy for taking in reviews instead of just when someone disagrees with you, you know, start bashing them because you know music is a crazy subjective thing and we're all gonna have different opinions uh, but i think we could still disagree at times and, and still kind of um, find other areas where we do agree so i just ask that you know when i'm super critical of something maybe you love take that with a grain of salt other times i may love something that you absolutely hate uh, and again, like I would say, look for those patterns of where we kind of align and agree. And I think that's where you can open up discussion from there. You may think, well, of course, he's not going to like these remixes. Uh, you know, this is a guy who likes soundtracks and orchestral music and not going to be into, you know, hardcore EDM. Whereas uh, I want to say like that actually is like one of the other genres that I really do love is I do love EDM, you know, and all the kind of different sub-genres of that, whether it's like trance or techno and all those kind. And a lot of these artists are artists that I love and listen to, you know, outside of film scores. So kind of theoretically, I really should love everything about this album, but I really don't. I think a lot of these remixes are really, I don't know, poorly done. And I don't want to say lazy effort, but a surprising effort from some of these artists. Going through the different tracks, I feel like, like some of them almost used like an intro to DJing sample pack uh, some of, with some of these. Uh, other times, like it was just these, these horrendous electronic sound effects. There's the one, uh, I think on the Clue track uh, by Paul Oakenfold, which is just that like chainsaw sound effect. I can't even describe it better than that, but it's like, and it's just, oh, I mean, later the track gets a little bit better for the most part though. It's just, it's something you would listen to or play for someone if you wanted to torture them or brainwash them like they do like in some season of 24. Now there are some tracks that are less offensive than others and those tend to be the ones for me that stayed closer to the source material. Um, track two by M83, and I, I really love M83. I love their work both on Oblivion uh, as well as their standalone albums. They are phenomenal, it's ones I listen to all the time. Now. I found the intro to that uh, that piece really just annoying and irritating. And after about 30 seconds, then it got into a little bit of a groove. And I actually liked the vocal element that they added because I, I just happened to like their vocals. Um, but that intro, man, like you gotta get past that to, to get into a little bit of a better groove with, uh, with that track. One thing that I like about the vocals is the vocals act, to me it doesn't matter kind of what they're saying, the vocals almost act as an instrument to me. And that's kind of what I like about normal songs. Being a soundtrack enthusiast, I don't care about lyrics at all in normal music. They could be saying whatever, it doesn't mean anything to me. More so, I find lyrics or, or the, the voice is, to me, it is an instrument that adds that different layer and how that is used affects how much I like a song. I know some people, they get a lot of meaning and value out of the words that somebody's saying. Uh, that's why certain genres are very appealing. Like, my wife really loves country music, which, not a fan. To me, you know, vocals are an instrument, they add that layer, and how they're used, especially in electronic music or remixes, can really make or break uh, a song. And there are some really creative things that can be done, uh, you know, with some of those tools. The track The Grid by The Crystal Method sounds kind of like they're using an old Apple, like Final Cut Pro, they had a, like a music extension program, kind of sounds like they're using some of those samples in that track. And it just, again, it sounded very, generic to me uh, and just kind of a wasted opportunity. 
and then there's other tracks where they use these sort of like cheesy risers that uh, again feel like that intro to DJ sample pack. So I wasn't really a fan there. Son of Flynn by Kai Theory. That was an okay track as well. And, and I think it is because they didn't dramatically shift from that original track. And there are a few interesting elements in there that uh, that kept it interesting, but uh, but you know different enough from that source material to make me actually like it uh, as its own piece. I think a standout track on this album is uh, Son of Flynn by Moby. And I think that's because I tend to gravitate towards Moby out of all of these other artists. Uh, but that was a pretty, uh, pretty okay track. Rinsler by Cascade. Uh, this one was okay, but this one felt, um, again, on that generic side, I could see this being used in a film, uh, in my mind, I'm picturing like a scene where, you know, some sort of government agent is meeting an arms dealer or something in a nightclub in Prague. And, you know, that's just the background music of the club. Um, as long as it doesn't draw too much attention to itself, it's kind of okay in that background. On the album, it's listenable compared to some of the other tracks. Derez by Avicii is also a pretty good track. It's a very much an Avicii type song. Like if you like him, I think you'll like this one as well. You know, it, it's a good way of sort of personalizing that song to his style. Um, so again, one, one of the, the more okay tracks on the album. I mean, so outside some of those songs, there wasn't a lot to offer for me. I was really surprised. I, and I kept having a different experience. I listened to this a number of times and I, the like, first time I listened to it, I absolutely hated it. The second time I'm like, okay, I was a little bit too harsh. This is not bad. And then I kept like going back and forth and each time I sort of felt something different <laughs> and uh, like different levels of it being terrible to, okay, not too bad. In the end, I still don't really like it. It's not to my taste. I do think there are some people out there who will absolutely love this because there are so many different genres and takes on EDM. Some people are really gonna like this style. So my review is not gonna be accurate to everybody's interpretation of this album. Some people are gonna absolutely love it. Overall for the music, it, it, it seems like a wasted opportunity. Uh, there's so many directions I felt like this could have gone in. I think of other soundtrack to, to EDM uh, kind of remixes like Tiesto's I'm a Pirate, which worked with that original material so well, but then spun it into his own sound as well. And to me, I think Moby maybe came the closest, but the others, I guess, were true to, to a lot of those artists from, from what I know about them but just didn't deliver as good of a track as, you know, Tiesto's I'm a Pirate. Like you could play that in a club and people, you know, would go crazy for it. Um, even though it's more soundtracky than, than Tron. Tron, you could probably get away with playing a lot of these at a club and nobody would know that this is from a movie. Now, as for the artwork itself, if you saw my other Tron review, I talked about the Mondo release and the other Record Store Day release of 2020. And I kind of highlighted the differences. One was very elaborate and you know beautiful artwork. The other focused more on the simplicity just of the logo. This takes that simplicity of the logo and digitizes it a little bit more. I think that this cover matches the music very well in that it is also terrible. Uh, I think this looks like something somebody would create in like an intro to Corel paint class in middle school. It just, it's just, it's such a strange choice. I feel like you could go in so many directions with doing you know an electronic remix of a soundtrack and this is the cover they chose. I just thought it was a very strange choice. It was just kind of a digitization of that cover. Like it just looks too simplistic and too amateur. Like I feel like you could have a really polished, interesting piece with this score. And to me, this cover was a huge disappointment. Looking at the back, it, it feels off. Like it seems like it's just a blow up of the CD cover. Like the font sizes are almost too big for uh, a vinyl record. And it is that simplistic computer font that you would see in like a sci-fi movie in the 80s. And I just think too simplistic and nothing really interesting that, that draws you in there. Again, I know art is not a big deal to everybody, but in a lot of my reviews, I, I comment on it. So in this case, not a fan of, of what they've done here. Um, that won't take away from the music for a lot of people. Uh, but it's just like one other blow into me not liking this overall album. 
There is some interesting design elements in the gatefold. There is this nice kind of line out drawing of the, the light cycles, which is kind of cool. Similarly, uh, in the insert, they have that similar drawing and style. So at least there's some element of kind of interest and design in this, uh, but pales in comparison to uh, what's been done on the, the regular release. The record itself, like it's a fine looking record. If you want a bright ass green record in your collection, sure, yeah, it looks nice, but it's, uh, it doesn't add or subtract anything from this, this overall collection. Again, I'm not sure why they went with the green color motif. I don't think it's really represented in the film anywhere. It's mostly blues and oranges. So I guess as the remix option, oh, <laughs> maybe that's what it is. It's the yellow and the blue mixing. Okay, so may maybe there is some thought into that if that's what they were going for, mixing of the, the yellow and blue color motifs, uh, but still doesn't fit with the like aesthetic of the rest of the film. And, I, and it'd be better if they tied it to that. Uh, and you know, they could do something cool, especially for a remix, you would think they would do something a little bit more interesting uh, with the disc. But again, I'm fine if it was standard black, I'm fine with the green, it's okay. Uh, no complaints there. And as for the pressing, it was okay as well. Didn't have any uh, major issues. No stand, like it wasn't a standout piece. Uh, I'm not sure if they did any kind of particular mastering for this release compared to like whether it was a digital release or CD release. I'm not even sure. Like I don't know the history of this album. Uh, so that's where it was kind of a surprise for me. I thought, you know, it could be something very exciting, but it ended up just being a bit of a, a disappointment. With music, it's not gonna be a winner every time. You win some, you lose some, uh, especially with a, a blind purchase, that's kind of the risk you take. This is a desirable album for some. I know people uh, on various groups that have been looking for it, so I hope you could find yourself a copy. I'm debating whether or not I'll keep it. Uh, I might actually end up selling it just because I, I don't love it. I don't see myself taking it out to listen to. I think if I had to choose between this and the normal soundtrack, I would choose the normal soundtrack every single time. Maybe one of these tracks, maybe the M83 or the Moby one, I'll listen to uh, just digitally. Don't see myself listening to this one again. One of the downsides of this channel is a majority of the time, my reviews are gonna be positive or glowing uh, because I have heard the music ahead of time and I know what I'm expecting and it's all the little details that I ended up just kind of uh, liking or disliking. But overall, you know, I, I'm, pretty positive when it comes to the reviews. So it's really these blind ones where it is most likely that I would be more critical of. So I guess that's kind of good to take some of those so you do hear some uh, of the options that I, I don't always love. I'd love to hear your thoughts whether you liked or disliked this actual album. And if you had any suggestions on specific remixes of soundtracks that maybe I haven't heard of or a viewer out there hasn't heard of, drop that in the comments below and maybe we could find some, some magic uh, in there uh, that will sort of reignite some beautiful old pieces that we love. Thank you for sticking around and tuning into this episode of Popcorn and Vinyl. Please leave a, a like on the video and subscribe if you like to see future videos about soundtracks and soundtrack related topics. Uh, there's lots more that I have on my list to cover, so look forward to seeing those. We'll see you next time.